rays in reference to principal axis so incident rays which are parallel to principal axis after reflection usually meet or appear to be meeting because for convex mirrors you know that rays diverge and they don't go and meet at a point so we usually extend the rays towards focus in convex mirrors you will see how through diagrams in this session now the distance between pole and focus of a spherical mirror had another technical term which was termed as focal length of a spherical mirror it was represented by a small f these were all the technical terms that were related to the spherical mirror and will be useful to us when we discuss image formation through ray diagrams we know that if an object is at a point and ref incident rays are drawn from that point and after reflection those incident rays meet at a point those reflected rays meet at a point then that point will be termed as the image of the object from which the incident rays came right so how do we form these images on convex mirrors and how do we understand image formation by convex mirrors and concave mirrors is what we would be discussing so in this session first we understand how we will form image through images through ray diagrams then we will come and discuss how we form images through concave mirrors and images through convex mirrors and then we will discuss in a short while the differences between real and virtual images and you will come to understand when you see the image formation by concave or convex mirrors as to what virtual is and what real is hence without any further ado let me begin this session by discussing image formation by ray diagrams now usually ray diagrams why are they called ray diagrams because even objects and images that we use will be represented by a straightward line segment arrow which will be a ray and even incident light reflected right will be represented by rays hence these are ray diagrams now how these ray diagrams will intersect with each other and how they will be formed is what we are going to discuss now you know that any object as of right now we are representing that object by an arrow on the principal axis look at the diagram that is being presented in front of you on the right hand side object ab the actual object is not drawn but a representation of it is given in the form of an arrow with arrow pointing upwards it means that the image is not inverted but it is straight upwards so now you could actually draw infinite amount of light rays from every object that would come and interact go be incident on the mirror and then be reflected back but all those complicated rays will not let you get a clear picture of how they are intersecting and how are you supposed to get an intersection point through them there are some specific rays which when intersect which when go and are incident on the mirror they will behave in a certain way means they will reflect at a certain point they will go meet at a certain point or they will be coming from a certain point or they will appear to come from a certain point there are four such types of rays that we would be discussing and from there we will go and see how we can use these exact rays that we discussed and use them to discuss different image formations by convex and concave mirrors so reflection of light as i told you follows the same two rules everywhere and to construct a ray diagram usually we look at the intersection of at least two reflected rays so which gives us the position of the image at a point wherever they would intersect would be the head of the arrow that will represent your object now as you see in the diagram that has been presented to you on the right hand side there is an object there is an image and there are other points that are given to you the most important is the labeling of the diagram once you are drawing a ray diagram you know how to draw a mirror you know how to draw an object i just told you and the same way images would be drawn it is important to label where the pole is the focus is the center of curvature is and other points if mentioned this will help you identify and draw the diagrams more properly it is important to label all these points first before you start drawing your object and start drawing rays through them now 
the first two types of rays we would be discussing would be rays which come parallel to your principal axis and rays that come through focus now if you draw any diagram right now you do not have an object in front of you you just have a mirror and a principal axis as i have presented in front of you the diagrams on the right hand side any ray which is coming parallel to your principal axis after passing through after reflection it will pass through the focus or it will appear to come through focus now there are two ways i mentioned it any parallel ray any ray which is parallel to principal axis incident on the mirror look at the lower diagram that has been represented in front of you on the right hand side you have a ray that is coming parallel to the principal axis and it goes and is incident on the mirror both on concave and convex after reflection from a concave mirror since the focus is in front of it it will reflect and pass through focus in case of the convex mirror the parallel ray will be reflected but since the focus lies behind the mirror all we need to see that if the focus is actually coming through with the reflected ray or not we can see this using just an extension of the ray if you see a dotted line it comes through the focus when it is in case of convex mirror right hand side downwards then you will see that the actual reflected ray it's not going and meeting the focus but if you extend the ray backwards it actually appears to be coming from the focus hence we say two different things they actually go and reflect and pass through focus in case of concave mirror and sometimes they actually appear to be coming from the focus this is in cases of convex mirror because the focus lies behind the mirror the center of curvature lies behind the mirror now the second kind of rays that we would be discussing would be rays coming through the focus now if you have either a concave mirror or a convex mirror you have a certain ray that is coming through the focus in case of concave mirror you can easily draw it and you know after as the rule says after reflection it will become parallel to your principal axis so your incident ray is passing through the focus or in case of convex mirror it is appear to be coming from the focus after reflection it will go parallel to your principal axis look at the diagrams on top the top two diagrams concave and convex mirror in the first case the incident ray is coming through the focus passes through the focus is incident on your mirror and right after reflection it becomes parallel to the principal axis in the second case if you extend the ray that is being drawn it seems to be coming it seems to be passing from the focus it not really passes through the focus it seems to be passing through the focus and after reflection it immediately becomes parallel to the principal axis so these are the two rays that we will remember when we will draw our ray diagrams image formation through concave and convex that whenever we draw an object if the incident rays we draw would be parallel to the principal axis after reflection they will pass through focus in case of concave mirror or appear to be passing through focus in case of convex mirror if rays coming through the focus or appear to be coming through focus after reflection will become parallel to principal axis now let us go to the other two rays that we would be discussing now ray that passes through the center of curvature or appears to be passing through the center of curvature it will get reflected back in the same direction it came from in case of concave mirror you can actually pass the ray incident which is incident on your mirror through center of curvature and that same ray will get reflected back in the same direction so you will see only one ray because they will be on top of each other hence you see only one ray but you have to draw both directions one incident and one reflection 
in case of convex mirror you can only draw the extended version as you see the dotted line or in case of convex mirror on the top diagram on the right hand side which represents con convex mirror you will see that the ray is coming in the direction of center of curvature so when you extend that ray you see that it actually is passing through center of curvature in case of convex so it will get reflected back in the same direction so it is true for both mirrors so either the com a ray which is coming through center of curvature or is appearing to be coming from center of curvature will get reflected back in the very same direction now the fourth kind of ray we would be discussing is incident rays which are directly incident on the pole of the mirror both in case of concave and convex when an incident ray is directly obliquely incident on the pole means it at an inclination it is incident on the pole then the principal axis will act as normal for that incident ray and that incident ray will get reflected back at the same angle which is formed between the incident ray and principal axis now if you look at the diagrams that i have given to you on the bottom side both in both the diagrams we have concave and concave mirror a uh, concave and convex mirrors and we have incident rays which are directly incident on the pole at an angle i then we know that the reflected ray will get reflected following the law of reflection which says that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so both those rays will make equal angles with your principal axis so these are the four types of rays that we would remember because we know their behavior and we know what way in which way they would be reflected back and all these four rays will help us form images quite easily they will help us understand intersection of reflected rays quite easily so now let us go to image formation by concave mirrors so image formation by concave mirrors now you know you have a mirror a inward curved mirror you have a principal focus you have center of curvature and you have the principal axis plus the pole all labeled now we will discuss six positions where you can place an object for a concave mirror and what kind of image it will form what kind of intersection will the reflected rays bring the first position that we discussed discuss is when an object is very 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 far from the mirror so we describe that distance as being at infinity the object cannot really exist at infinity but a distance which is way beyond center of curvature to describe this distance we usually say that the object is at infinity when you place this object at infinity like i have you see that the arrow represents the object a represents the upper part or the top head of the object and b will represent the rear end or the end of the object so ab is an erect object which is at infinity now if you take the first ray which will start emerge from the point a and it is parallel to your principal axis as we already discussed it will pass through focus another parallel ray we take from b you can draw from anywhere you like but it should emerge from that object now using those four ray, usual ray diagram discussion that we did before we know that if we draw two parallel rays incident on the concave mirror both of them are as many parallel rays all of them will pass through the focus of the mirror so as you see that the rays represented by red they are all passing through the focus of the mirror so actually at the focus a very point like image is formed because all the intersections take place at that focus only there is no other intersection that is taking place hence when the object at in front of a concave mirror is placed at a very long distance which is described at infinity then the position of the image is at the focus it is a point like image it is extremely diminished in size and the image is real 
that is it for the position at infinity. Now let us discuss the next position. Object when placed beyond center of curvature but finite distance. It means that it is still when you are representing it by a diagram, it can still be on your principal axis. This is the difference between an object at infinity and an object beyond center of curvature. An object that is beyond your center of curvature is still further away from the mirror, but it is relatively closer. Hence, we keep this as beyond center of curvature. So, as you see, in the diagram, we have a concave mirror, we have focus F labeled, we have C as center of curvature labeled, and we have an object AB with the top of object being represented by point A. So now, we take two rays. The first one, we let it pass through the center of curvature. So we know that it gets reflected back at the same position. Now, we draw another ray which will be parallel to principal axis. As we know that if it is parallel to the principal axis, then it will pass through focus. Now, since it will pass through focus, both of the rays after reflection will meet at that point. Whatever point these rays meet at will act as the head of the image. Hence, we say an inverted image is formed because the head is facing downwards. Hence, wherever the two rays are meeting, that point we we'll name it as A dash and wherever on the principal axis the image the image's position is there wherever it sets foot on the principal axis that will be the foot of the image and it is labeled as B dash. Wherever the two reflected rays would intersect that point will count as the head of the image and wherever after extended that image to the principal axis wherever it will meet the principal axis will count as the foot of the image. We name this image as A dash B dash and now as we see when an object is placed beyond center of curvature and image that is formed is between your focus and center of curvature. Any object that is kept beyond center of curvature relatively closer to the mirror will have an image that will be formed between focus and center of curvature. Since this image is formed when the reflected rays are actually interacting with each other and not appear to be interacting with each other or intersecting with each other, hence we call this image as real. It is formed in front of the mirror, it is inverted and it is diminished. It means that its size is very small as compared to the size of the object. That is for when you place the object beyond center of curvature but at a finite distance. Now, let us go to image formation when object is exactly at center of curvature. When you place an object at the exact center of curvature, so our object is AB which will be at center of curvature as in the diagram that has been presented in front of you. If you take rays that pass through the focus, then they will go parallel after reflection. And if you take rays that are parallel and after reflection, you know that they will pass through focus. These are the two rays that are taken in the diagram. Now, you see that both of the rays are interacting at the point which is named A dash and that point is at a similar distance only on the opposite side but at a similar distance from the principal focus as point A is. That point now is named A dash and A dash B dash is your image which is similar or exactly equal to the size of the object AB. Hence, whenever you place an object at the center of curvature, the image will also be formed exactly at the center of curvature. Since this image is formed when rays are actually meeting with each other at a point, this image is real. This image, the image that is formed is inverted. As you see, the reflecting points mark the head of the image and it is as of the same size as that of the object. So, 
image formation by concave mirrors when the object is placed at center of curvature the image will also be at center of curvature the image will be inverted since the reflected rays are actually meeting at a point the image is real and it is of the same size try doing these diagrams always with a scale and a pencil after marking all the points such as pole focus center of curvature points that represent the object and rays at which points at which the reflection is taking place all these points must always be labeled and hence the observation that you get will become easier all the three images that we saw right now were real images now when object is between the focus and center of curvature as you see we are just for each position we are just shifting the object closer and closer to the mirror and observing what is happening we have defined points so we know that whenever we place any object within the range of these points a certain kind of similar image with similar effects will will be getting to us and hence we are discussing these points beyond center of curvature at center of curvature at infinity between center of curvature and focus right now the image the object that we are placing our object a b is between center of curvature and focus you take one ray parallel to the principal axis and make it pass through the focus after reflection you take the second ray it passes through the focus as incident when it is incident on the mirror after reflection becomes parallel to the principal axis both of them will intersect at a point which is beyond the center of curvature it is far away from the center of curvature as you see in the diagram you see the point at which they interact or at which they intersect is a dash which will act as the head of the image and the point at which this image will meet the principal axis will act at the, as the foot of the image and is labeled as b dash so whenever the object is between the focus and center of curvature the image formation takes place beyond center of curvature this image is also real it is inverted in size and the size as you see the distance from the principal axis to the head of the object head of the image is larger hence the height of the object or the size of the object is smaller than the size of the image or the size of the image that is formed is bigger than the size of the object let us now go to the next formation the next formation is when your object is placed directly after at the focus when object is placed at the focus the image is actually formed far beyond way away from the mirror and this image is since it is at a very large distance from the mirror it is termed as that this image is formed at an infinite distance or at infinity so if you take our object a b we have the object we have the concave mirror first let a parallel ray pass through the point a and we know that it will go through focus after reflection second ray we can make it pass through center of curvature if you want you can just have a ray which will be incident to the pole and you will see that those rays will actually after reflection not before reflection if you take the ray which is incident on the pole you will see that the incident ray will seem to re, uh, intersect with the reflected ray from the above but that will not be the case because image is formed by interaction or intersection of reflected rays so be careful while drawing ray diagrams only reflected rays that meet at a point or do not meet at a point will be the concern whether an image will be formed or not hence if you see those two rays after reflection they go parallel to each other and they do not meet hence this can conclude that the image that will be formed or they will go and they will meet at a very 
large distance if another kind of ray is drawn so we say that the image is formed at an infinite distance or very far away from the mirror this image that will be formed will also be real it will be inverted but it will be extremely magnified it would be too huge to take notice hence we say when the object is at the focus principal focus of a concave mirror the image that is formed will be at infinity this image will also be real since the rays will go and intersect at some point in time and this image will be inverted and extremely magnified it means that the size of the image will be extremely larger than the size of the object ab that is in front of us in the diagram let us now go to the next formation now we are taking the object way away from the focus and very close to the mirror this might make the reflected rays actually diverge and not meet this happens only in one case of a concave mirror when your object a b goes beyond the focus so beyond the focus but it is still in between the focus and the pole of the mirror now when the object is at the focus and pole of the mirror you see in the diagram that has been clearly presented on the top our object ab we have two rays one of them going straight from center of curvature and going straight back in the same line one we have a ray which is parallel to your principal axis and it passes through the focus of the mirror both of them are diverging in nature and you see that they do not actually meet in front of the mirror but if you extend them behind the mirror they actually appear to be meeting at a point since they are act not actually intersecting but only when we extend those rays behind the mirror they appear to be meeting at a point this is the only case where virtual images are found when reflected rays do not actually meet in front of the mirror but they meet go and they appear to be meeting behind the mirror then the a dash is the point or the point where the reflected rays are meeting will represent the head of the image and the head of the image this time is in the same direction as the head of the object hence the image is not inverted but the image is erect this is the name that is given to images which are opposite to inverted it is erect it is in the same direction the head points in the same direction as the object's head does as you see the image is magnified the size of the image or the distance of the point a dash from the principal focus is higher than that of point a and hence you see that a dash b dash that is the line segment or ray a dash b dash is greater than this object size or the ray ab which represents your object and they are actually not meeting with the actual reflected rays we are extending these reflected rays behind the mirror so they are appearing to meet they are not actually meeting and hence such images with such rays which do not actually meet at a point but appear to meet at a certain point only when they are extended behind the mirror then these reflected rays such reflected rays form virtual images so now i hope it is clear the basic difference between real and virtual images so this position where the object goes beyond your focus then the image that will be formed will be a virtual image it will not be real it will be erect it will be magnified and the image is formed behind the mirror the image is not formed in front of the mirror so this will not be able to appear on a screen now this is all for image formation by concave mirrors so what we discussed were six different positions that we placed our object in and we saw how image formations changed the first was when we placed the object exactly at a very large distance from the mirror we said this this of this particular place was at infinite distance or at infinity second we placed the object a little beyond the center of curvature third we placed it exactly at center of curvature then we placed it between center of curvature and focus then we placed it 
at focus and then all of these five instant incidences or instances formed real images only when the object was brought beyond focus and in between focus and pole was when the concave mirror produced a virtual image this is what we must always remember as it may appear as questions in a lot of places now image formation by concave uh, convex mirrors usually convex mirrors only have two positions because convex mirrors always form virtual images they do not form uh, real images for studying image formation by con convex mirror we would be taking two positions one when object would be at an infinite distance and the second when the object you can place it anywhere between infinite infinite distance and the pole of the mirror so the whole distance is covered and you can place the object anywhere now the first position that we are going to discuss for convex mirror so now that we are discussing convex mirrors the outer bulging part is the reflecting surface so now you first take the object at a very large distance from the mirror so we say that the object is at infinity so parallel rays of light will come from this object at infinity they will be diverging after reflection as you see in the diagram that has been presented in front of you but if you extend these rays back behind the mirror you will see that they will go and meet at focus since they are not actually meeting it is they are only appearing to meet after we are extending them behind the mirror this image will be virtual image it will be formed at principal focus of the mirror we know that the principal focus of a convex mirror is behind the mirror image will extreme be extremely diminished just as in case of concave mirror the image will be extremely diminished it will be a point size image but we but after certain experiments we know that the image is erect means it is in the same direction head points in the same direction as of the object and it is virtual so when an object is placed at an infinite distance then image is formed at principal focus of the mirror image is virtual image is erect and extremely diminished now let us go to the next case next case is when you place the object anywhere between infinite distance and pole so relatively finite distance is what we are talking about so now your object is visible at the principal axis now it is going to have some incident rays pass through them and after reflection you see that they will diverge in certain directions now you take any two rays and through the laws on the ray behavior that we discussed before formation on concave mirrors you make these rays reflect after they are incident on the mirror so whenever an object is placed between infinity and pole of a convex mirror you will see that the image will be formed between the principal focus and the pole look at the diagram that is given to you on the left hand side two rays they are after reflection going in or diverging in different directions only when you bring them back or you extend them behind the mirror and when you are extending these rays remember to not draw them by the same line segments you have to draw them dotted because they are not actual reflected rays reflected rays they are only being extended by us so that we can see that they are actually are appearing to meet and not really meeting hence if you bring these two rays backwards or you extend these two rays backwards behind the mirror you will see that they will meet at a certain point a dash b dash wherever they meet that point will be the head of the image and if you see the head of the image is in the same direction as the head of the object hence the image is erect it is diminished since it is smaller in size than the object very small so even if you bring this particular object closer and closer and closer to the pole you will see that the object the image will always be formed between principal focus and pole of the convex mirror both of them lying behind the mirror and the image will be virtual since the reflecting rays are not actually interacting or actually intersecting with each other they are appearing to meet only when we are extending them behind the mirror and the image is 
diminished. It is very small as compared to the size of the object. So this is all for image formation by concave and convex mirrors. We only discussed two positions for concave, uh, convex mirrors and six different positions for concave mirrors. Since we discussed all these images, we saw that at five positions, concave mirrors drew a real image and at one position that was between focus and pole, it drew a or it produced a virtual image, while your convex mirror produced a virtual image at almost every point it was placed at. So what is the difference between an actual real image and virtual image. A real image is formed due to an actual intersection of two reflected, two or more reflected rays. Whereas a virtual image is formed when reflected rays, when they are produced backwards, they are appearing to meet. Real images can always be obtained on a screen because the reflecting rays that we have, we can place a screen at where they are meeting and that screen will then produce the image formed. But virtual images cannot be obtained on a screen because the reflected rays are not actually going and meeting. A real image is inverted with respect to the object. Most real images are inverted with respect to the object. Even when the images that uh, that you see around you in your surroundings, they are inverted. It is only when the brain sends a signal to your um, optic area that it tells that invert this image back to its original position and then you see uh, an erect image. The actual image that is formed on your retinas that are part of the eye that form your image, the Im if they are real, they are inverted and the message that is sent by the brain actually helps your eye see an actual erect image. All real images that you see are invert formed inverted. A virtual image is erect with respect to the object. It means that the head points in the same direction, the arrowhead will point in the same direction as the object. So this, these are the differences between real and virtual images. It is important to remember them. They may be asked in a lot of exams. Plus, you must always be able to differentiate between real and virtual images when studying a formation, uh, image formations or reflection by either by mirrors, plane mirrors, concave, convex, or even when you will come to lenses. So. That is it for this session. Let us now discuss the summary of the entire session. In this particular session, we studied about how we would have some rays that go and are incident on the mirror in a particular way. They behave or they interact with a certain point after reflection. This behavior of those reflecting lights, uh, reflecting rays actually helps us draw ray diagrams and understand the position of object and image formation. So we know that the rays that are coming parallel to the principal axis after passing through the focus, after reflection will pass through the focus or they will be appear to we coming from the focus. These are two ways. I told you as in case of convex mirror, they do not actually pass through the focus since the focus lies behind the convex mirror and the ray will only after reflection can be appear to be coming from the focus. After you extend it backwards, it will not actually be coming from the focus. Those rays that are coming from the focus or are up appearing to come from the focus will become parallel to principal axis after reflection on the mirror. Why are we saying both things coming from the focus or appear to be coming from focus? Because we have two types of mirrors, concave and convex, one in which the image actually or the ray of light actually goes and passes through the focus in which it actually in the second case it does not actually go and pass through the focus. It only appears appears to be passing through or coming through because you extend the ray using dotted lines backwards behind the mirror. Next, a ray which is coming through the center of curvature or appearing to come through a center of curvature will get reflected back along the same path. So it will just be one reflected, one reflected ray and incident ray. One line segment will repray or one ray will represent both of them. Another ray which is incident obliquely or at an angle 
on directly the pole of the concave or the convex mirror it will get reflected and will follow the law where angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection and your principal axis will act as the normal now these are the four types that we discussed the four types of rays that will now help us form images through concave and convex mirrors now for the position of object we discuss a different position of the image and the nature of size in concave mirrors so in concave mirrors when the object is at infinity the position of the image is at the focus it is a point size image though it is inverted it is very diminished and it is real in nature since the reflected rays are actually interacting when the position of object is beyond your center of curvature but at a finite distance relatively closer to the mirror we have the position of the image between the focus and center of curvature the image is again real it is inverted and it is diminished it means it is very small in size as compared to the size of the object now when you place the object at exactly the center of curvature then the image will also be formed at exactly the center of curvature it will be real it will be inverted and it will be of the same size as that of the object now when you bring it closer and now the position changes to between the focus and center of curvature your image will go and fo be formed at beyond the center of curvature but at a finite distance this is the image that will be magnified in nature and it will be real it will be inverted magnified means the size now of the image will be larger than that of the object at focus when you place the object then the position of the image will be at an infinite distance but we see or we say the rays when go and meet at a certain point in time the image that will be formed will be real it will be inverted and it will be magnified in nature it will be very large as compared to the object that is placed at your focus when you have now shifted your position of the object between the pole and the focus of the mirror then the mirror this time will produce an image which is virtual in nature it will be erect and magnified these times when you have the object between the pole and focus of the mirror the reflected rays will diverge actually so when you extend them behind the mirror they will appear to meet at a point and hence when they meet at a point that point will be in the same direction as that of the object it will be above the principal axis so hence the head of the image will point in the same direction as the head of the object the image will be magnified it will be larger in size as compared to the object so these are the six positions that we discussed in case of conway concave mirror all of them formed different types of images be it inverted diminished magnified or erect or virtual for the first five positions we have images which are real for the last position when the object moves closer to the mirror and it is between pole and focus the image becomes virtual for the case of convex we have only two cases one when the object is at infinity and the second case where the object is anywhere between that infinite distance and pole of the mirror the first case where the object is at infinity image is formed at principal focus principal focus of a convex mirror is behind the mirror and hence the image that is formed is virtual erect but the image is very diminished it means that the size of the image is very small as compared to the size of the object when the object is placed between infinity and pole anywhere between the infinite distance and pole image will be formed between the pole and principal focus behind the mirror it will be behind the mirror it will be virtual it will be erect and it will not be magnified so it will be smaller in size this is all for this session in the coming sessions or in the next particular session as of now we will be deriving a formula that will relate the focal length of 
the mirror and the object the distance at which an object is placed and the distance at which the image is formed we call them object position and image position we will relate the focal length with the with the object position and the image position and will derive a formula for mirrors curved mirrors both concave and convex it will be a common formula then we will discuss sign convention for reflection by spherical mirrors now you have a position at which the object is kept you have a position at which the image is formed which direction should be taken as positive which direction should be taken as negative you have the object right on top of principal axis most cases real images they are inverted and they are formed below the principal axis which side should be taken as positive and which side should be taken as negative and what will they convey this will actually be described by some rules that are called sign conventions when we have discussed sign conventions we will discuss a term called magnification that compares the heights of the object by the height of the image that is formed by that specific mirror after we have completed all of this we will discuss a summary of the entire session and after that summary we will recall the entire chapter right from session 1 to session 3 which will cover all summaries of reflection of light at curved surfaces this is all for this session i hope the image formations have been clear all the diagrams have been clear an entire session was de dedicated to discussing ray diagrams and image formation because they play a very important role in the entire chapter of reflection of light at curved surfaces. This is all for this session. Until we meet next session, thank you and please be safe.